is equal to 1. So we have here the first entry is the excess return of the first stock. The second entry is the excess return of the second stock at time t is 1. The third entry of course is the excess return measures the excess return of the third stock at time t is 1. And the last entry measures the excess return of the nth stock given we are at time t is 1. This is very simple actually because given that we have a data matrix, yeah, let's write here our data matrix, so we have here for time t is 1 the excess returns across all stocks. Yeah. Then we have the second, in the second uh, column, t is equal to 2, we have the excess returns for uh, the corresponding stocks from the first stock, second stock, until the nth stock. Yeah. So we have always, you know, for, for each point in time, we have in, in our data matrix the corresponding excess returns for our stocks. So NS1, NS2, until uh, the uh, last entry where we have uh, capital N. Yeah? So this matrix here is an N by T matrix. So our data matrix is N by T. So we just have to grab the first column and multiply it with this, with this, exp with this expression here. And we get and what we get are the, uh, the estimates lambda hat 0, lambda hat 1, lambda hat 2 for the first point in time. Yeah? So we're multiplying this guy here with the first column vector here in our data matrix, yeah? four point uh, given time t is 1, we get our lambda hat uh, lambda hat 0, lam, uh, lambda hat 1, and lambda hat 2, yeah? t is equal to 1. So in the next iteration, we grab the second column here, then t is equal to 2, and we get again, we get the uh, cross-sectional n by 1 vector, yeah, multiplied with this expression here, which is the same thing, and we get new estimates then t is 2, and again we get new estimates, lambda hat uh, lambda, uh, 0, lambda hat 1, lambda hat 2. Yeah? And we do it for all t, yeah? t, capital T times. So, and we always store our results, and so on, capital T, in, in a new matrix here, yeah? lambda hat 0, lambda hat 1, lambda hat 2. And what we get is obviously a 3 by t matrix. Or in general it's k plus 1 by t. Okay? So the only thing that we then need to do, the sixth step basically, the sixth, sixth step is then that we, we have now here uh, the uh, evolution of each, in, in, in each row. Uh, we have the evolution of the corresponding lambda across time. So what we have to do is, if you want to have the corresponding t statistic, let's say for um, our cross-sectional risk premium for the uh, first risk factor for lambda 1. So what we do is we take the uh, sample average here, either we take the sample average here, because the sample average of the second row in this matrix here is the same like the point estimate here. Yeah? By construction it must be the same. So either we, we grab from our from our uh, risk premium vector, the corresponding element, or we just take here the sample average of our new, newly constructed matrix and the sample average of, let's say, of the uh, lambda hat 1 is simply 
lambda 1 hat bar yeah? and you know exactly how to calculate it, how, how to calculate it because we have just on the previous uh, whiteboard uh, drawing uh, we showed the, the formula for that. So this is in the uh, nominator and in the denominator what, what do we have to do is we take the square root of the variance of our lambda 1 and divide it by t. Yeah. And what we get is the corresponding t statistic for lambda hat 1. Yeah. And in the same manner we would get the t statistics for uh, our lambda hat 2 or lambda hat 0. Yeah? We go back to our constructed matrix here and take the, take the, time, the corresponding time series mean, the time series average, and divide it by the square root of the variance divide, uh, of our corresponding time series divided by t. Yeah? Simple definition of the uh, t statistic. Yeah, we even could um, we even could estimate the uh, sample covariance matrix, but this is something that we that we don't need for this course. But this is maybe something for the doctoral course for the follow-up course that we can talk about then, right? Then we can basically see how the risk factors, how the risk premiums are correlated. But anyways, so once again, if we want to test if the model explains if our model explains the cross-section of expected returns, uh, we have to test if our lambda zero hat or lambda zero hat is statistically different from zero. So what we have to do is we have to we have to get the t-statistic straight and then we know already the distribution is is asymptotically distributed as normal. Yeah? Here's our estimate, yeah, this is the distribution of our lambda at zero, and then we know the critical values here already, it's 1.96 and uh, minus 1.96, yeah, and when our t-statistic gives us a value that is, let's say, 2.5, yeah, it's obviously larger than 1.96, and then we would say, okay, um, the uh, average mispricing, yeah, given by um, lambda hat zero is statistically significant. Hence, we would conclude that our model cannot explain the uh, cross-section of expected returns. Yeah. If we have, however, um, a t-statistic that indicates, that gives us a value, for instance, of one, which is below 1.96, then we would conclude that our model is able to uh, explain or to, to, to price the cross-section of expected returns correctly. Yeah. If we want to know, for instance, if, if we have as, as our two risk factors, let's say we have um, size and value. Yeah? Let's say we, our, our, our model, we wanna, we're interested in, in, in investigating whether the size premium or the value premium uh, is priced. Yeah? So we want to, in, in this cross sectoral framework, we would ask basically the, the question does the uh, variation of the exposure against the size factor, does it have an impact or does it, does it explain the cross section of expected returns or does the uh, value, that, that, that does the exposure against the value premium explain the cross-section of expected returns. So what, what we do is then, okay, we have the risk factors, we have the, the, the time series of the size factor, the time series of the value factor, we run our model, and uh, we then have to check the t-statistic of the, um, in, in this context, obviously, this uh, lambda hat one would be the uh, risk premium associated with the size factor, yeah, given that our x1 is the is the return of the of the size anomaly or the size factor and uh, we have to check then okay if is the t statistic larger than 1.96 first of all is it positive second is it larger than 
is that if it's negative and significant, then obviously there's something weird going on. Uh, then we have to think about it. So if it's larger than zero, if it's positive, and the T statistic is larger than 1.96, we would conclude uh, size risk or the size risk factor is priced in the cross section of expected returns because the variation in the size beta explains or explains significantly the uh, cross section of expected returns. And in the same way, it would be for the value factor, okay? Yeah, this is what I would like to, uh, to go through with respect to uh, cross-sectional regressions. Once again, in the, uh, of course, we can ex expand the model. We can have the more uh, regressors we have, you know, of, co of course, the longer this uh, vector would be. It's all, everything, what we do is straightforward and, and easy to expand to uh, more risk factors or uh, more, more equations. Yeah? So, but once again, in the RFM course, it was it has been done the other way around. Yeah? So the they have basically started with the uh, the first the first re regression was uh, the cross section regression, and then the second re and then the second regression was in the time series dimension. Uh, and what we have done here here we have it done the other way around. So everything that you do in cross sectional regressions depends a little bit, of course, on the research question that you have. Okay, so what we will do next is we will uh, talk about uh, the second moment, the, 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 the variance or the volatility, and we will talk about uh, how we model the conditional volatility uh, in the time series framework across assets.